We are on uh, 2018 May 33. This is the second part of my analysis of the talk of Vladimir Putin in March when he presented a series of very impressive new Russian weapons. In the international press, some express their skepticism with respect to this uh, infinite range Russian cruise missile propelled by nuclear energy. In my precedent video, I have shown that this corresponded to a quite simple and rustic technology from the 50s, initially developed by United States with their project uh, of uh, long-range uh, cruise missile Pluto propelled by nuclear energy. If one accepts the sophisticated guidance and control system, all what you need for this nuclear reactor is tube ceramics and low enrichment uh, nuclear fuel. Today, any rogue country could perfectly build it. All the technical data are available on the internet given by United States and declassified. For skeptical, I recommend to look after this five video produced by American among the set of untold stories. In my precedent video, I have also said that the MHD propulsion was silent. It requires an explanation. Let's go back to the MHD submarine of Stewart Way. Let's remove the MHD wall accelerator. Just consider the naked hull. Consider the velocity of the fluid with respect to the object. Water flows around it with a constant density. So that to keep the flux of water constant, the velocity must be higher along the hull. It is maximum at the maximum cross section of the hull. If you have any difficulty to understand why the velocity grows when you are along the hull, just imagine you have two hulls close together. Let's go back to the pattern with a single hull. A boundary layer forms and develops around the hull which express the frictional process. In this point of the hull, we have figured the velocity profile enlarged on the feature. Let's suppose that we can measure the component of the velocity parallel to the wall. In a point B, the velocity profile changes. In C, we see that the action of the wall on the fluid becomes strong enough to pull it along in the forward direction. What does it mean? Before this line C, the flow lines remain parallel to the wall. We say that the flow is laminar. After that line, those flow lines are no longer parallel to the wall. The flow becomes turbulent and we get a turbulent wake, which is the source of noise. Similarly, the unavoidable turbulence which takes place at the edge of the blades of a propeller brings a second source of noise. How to cancel the noise? First, let's remove the propeller. Second, let's try to cancel the turbulent wake. What is the origin of such turbulent wake? It comes from the fluid driving by the hull 
due to the friction force. If we accelerate the fluid, the source of such turbulent wake will disappear. This idea became a reality in the beginning of the 80s. Successful experimental work showed fully laminar MHD controlled flows. Now you understand if the energy is provided by a nuclear reactor, how an unmanned submarine propelled by MHD can be both very fast and silent. Now President Putin presents a new weapon, very impressive. We already have it. As we work on new systems, we've developed a new hypersonic system, air-based system. And I think you understand by now that nothing similar exists anywhere in the world. We've successfully tested this new system in, on December 1st, 2017. This system is already operational in the Southern Military District. It's on combat duty. Unique specifications of this new system uh, will enable us to deliver the missile to its target in just a matter of a few minutes. This hypersonic missile that travels at the speed of uh, more than 10 Mach can also maneuver, overcoming all the existing and I think even future air defense and missile defense systems, delivering its payload within the range of 2,000 kilometers with conventional and nuclear charges. We gave this system the name of Kinjal, Dagger. Let's watch uh, the next video now. Let us summarize. This Kinzhal hypersonic missile is fully operational. Its range is 2,000 kilometers and it flies at Mach 10. When any object moves in the air, it implies two kinds of phenomena. The first deals with hydrodynamics and matter for mechanical constraints due to the pressure field and the tangential force due to the friction. The second is called aerodynamics and is a matter for the thermal flux due to the heating of the air by compression and friction. If the object flies at subsonic velocity, the second phenomena are negligible. A modern liner flies at an altitude of 30,000 feet and at a velocity of 550 knots. Why such peculiar altitude and no more? To a given altitude corresponds a minimum velocity necessary to achieve sustentation. At an altitude of 50,000 feet, the minimum required velocity is uh, 1,300 knots. It's a Mach 2 supersonic velocity and it corresponds to the airplane Concorde. At 80,000 
of heat, the corresponding minimum velocity is 2000 knots. It corresponds to the well-known Mach 3.2 uh, spy plane Blackbird. For such altitudes, this corresponds to minimum velocity to have enough lift. You may cruise faster, but it will cost you more fuel. There are economic crews. Let's go back to a commercial airplane. It just flies as fast as possible considering the economical constraints. Its velocity is just below the speed of the sun at this altitude. If it would fly faster, an additional drag called the wave drag would appear that would require much more fuel to achieve the flight. What is a wave drag? Where does it come from? All specialists of fluid mechanics know that there is a close analogy between the field subsonic supersonic and the cruise of a ship over the sea. The waves that propagate at the free surface of a liquid are analog to the sound waves. When an object takes place, it is pushed into a free surface liquid, it generates surface waves. Let's have a look on that from above. We have a point and a sound wave, circular sound wave, is emitted from this point. Here are successive states, but in that case the emitter, the right point, doesn't move. And here are all the states together. Now I move my finger horizontally. I create a circular wave again. The red line shows the movement of the finger in time with velocity v in red times. The wave forwards and backward goes faster. See the two blue lines. Now I show that again. Again, notice that the wave runs forward faster than the finger. It keeps the fluid warned about the presence and movement of the finger. This is a view of the process from above. The moving finger is featured by a red point. Now you understand what is a wave. A wave is an information carrier. This wave informs the fluid forward that the finger is coming or backward that it is leaving. Forward or backward to restore the flatness of the free surface. The fundamental function of the surface wave is to keep the flatness of the free surface. In fact, when you move your finger slowly, the surface of the water remains almost perfectly flat. By analogy, if an airplane flies in the air at subsonic velocity, the density of the air all around it remains constant. It corresponds to an uncompressible flow. Now, instead considering an object moving in a rest uh, fluid, the physicists prefer to consider the movement of the fluid around an object that doesn't move. 
I represent a wave emitted at a, any time from the object. It is obvious that such waves can extend over all space, so that all the particles of the fluid are informed at any time of the presence and movement of the red object. It becomes very different if the flow velocity is higher than the velocity of the surface waves. Then we get that. Clearly, the waves cannot propagate upstream in the white area. Now, if the velocity of the incoming flow is higher than the velocity of the surface waves, we can follow the expansion of a wave. Clearly, the surface waves cannot propagate over all the white area. Then, at such small perturbations, reinforce each other, it creates a light front wave that becomes visible. Can we observe such little ripples on the surface of a moving fluid? Yes. Just use a toothpick. If you have a gutter, you can do that. By the way, my house is very close to a spillway, which offers variable velocity flow. On this picture, you see that Archibald Higgins puts his two speaks upstream. There, the velocity of the fluid is smaller than the velocity of the surface waves, so that no riddle appears. This is the analogy of subsonic flight in the air. It corresponds to the following pattern for the wave propagation. In the next image, Archibald plunges his toothpick in a place where the velocity of the flow is equal to the velocity of the surface waves. Then a riddle perpendicular to the flow forms. See the corresponding image of the wave propagation. Next image, in this portion of the flow, the velocity becomes higher than the propagation velocity of the surface waves. We get two riddles. This is the analogy of a supersonic flight. See the corresponding pattern showing the wave propagation schema. Now, if Archibald would put his two speed downstream of this position, he would get that and that. We see that the faster the flow, the sharper is the angle formed by the two riddles, so that this angle gives a measure of the velocity of the fluid. What about such riddles? in a supersonic gas flow. What could be the corresponding physical meaning? If we would put a thin steel wire transverse to the flow in a supersonic wind tunnel, we could observe the two flat waves produced by this obstacle. Below, you may see how the increase of the velocity changes the angles of the two waves. In gas dynamics, we call those waves Mach waves. The physicist will easily build the formula that links this angle to the value of the so-called Mach number, which is the ratio of the velocity of the fluid with respect to the local value of the speed of sound. Now, let's go back to our gutter. In general, a series of two speaks is not necessary to create the ripple system. The natural roughness of the wall produces it. Its depth is variable. See the lower figure. On what side? 
it turns to zero. Then the friction of the ground slows down the velocity of the fluid. So that below a dotted line A, the velocity becomes too small to produce ripples. The dotted line is equivalent to a sonic line. If you look carefully, you will see that the direction of the ripple in the vicinity of such edge becomes perpendicular to the flow. As you can see from a scientific point of view, it can be very fruitful to observe carefully the flow in a gutter. Now, following the flow of our gutter, we go further. There, in that expansion fan, we observe that the flow is accelerated. Now we continue to follow our gutter. And then we find something completely different. The flow seems to have some difficulty to take that band. A surf arises which goes with a discontinuity of the velocity. This last is drastically reduced when the fluid passes that surf. In that configuration, the inertial force makes the flow to expand. In fluid mechanics, we call it an expansion fan. The local value of the density and pressure decrease. In that configuration, the inertial force tends to compress the fluid. The local values of the pressure and density are increased. We have a compression effect. We have the same phenomena at the bow of a ship. And we are going to look at that very carefully. As I told you, there is a close analogy between the waves that takes place at the bow of a ship and the oblique shock waves that take place at the leading edge of a wing embedded in a supersonic flow. Around the ship, the two blue lines are bow waves. Around the leading edge of the wing embedded in a supersonic flow, the blue lines are two plain oblique shock waves. But there is a difference between the bow wave and the shock wave. The shock wave is very thin. In the air, in normal condition of pressure and temperature, its thickness is less than a hundredth of millimeter, so that it can be considered as a discontinuity. On the side of the ship, we notice that the level of the water is lower than the floating level. In this precedent feature, we see that the curved side of the hull creates an expansion fan. In an expansion fan, the velocity grows, but correlatively the density and the pressure decrease. In a free surface liquid flow, the analog of the pressure and density is the level of the water. This explains why the level of the water is lower than the floating level on the side of the ship. In uh, pink, we have pictures the area where the level of the water is higher and where the density and pressure of the gas is higher. Now, let us complete the schematic pattern of the flow around a ship where the hull has been designed in order to be similar to wing. As usual, we consider a liquid flow passing along a stationary hull. Then, when the fluid encounters the first wave, the bow wave, its velocity is reduced and the level of water is raised. Then, going along the hull, it gets an overspeed. The level of water becomes lower than the general level of the sea. Through a second set of two stern waves, this level is restored, while the velocity gets the value of the general flow. This is similar around a wing, except through the two sets of oblique shock waves, 
the flow experiences a discontinuity. Using the equation of fluid mechanics, the equation of Navier-Stokes, we may compute the pattern of the Mach lines. We know that they are envelopes of sound waves. They represent a perturbation of the pressure. It is clear that on this schema, such perturbations accumulate in the birthplace of shock waves. We know now the cause of the shock wave. They are the result of the accumulation of pressure perturbation. At last, we discover how such shock could be avoided just keeping the parallelism of the Mach line. I introduced this new concept in 1975. Why is it desirable to avoid shock waves? First, they modify the pressure distribution around the profile, and the result is a new drug called a wave drug. Second, when the Mach number grows, the temperature at the stagnation point of the model of the wing of the craft grows too. What are the consequences? For an example, for an airplane like Concorde, which flew at Mach 2, the wave drag corresponded to 50% of the energy required to ensure the flight. At Mach 2, Concorde spent 50% of its fuel to make noise. For the SR-71 Blackbird, these temperatures rises at 400 degrees centigrade. Through our hydraulic analogy, we only use the level of the water to feature the density of the gas, but we don't take account of the local value of temperature and pressure. We recall that the pressure corresponds to the product of the density by the temperature. Let's figure the pressure by a color. White features the normal pressure of the fluid. The blue color will feature a region where the pressure is lower. This goes with a higher velocity according to the law of Mr. Daniel Bernoulli. We have said earlier that a subsonic flight corresponded to constant density air and compressible gas. In such condition, where does the lift of the wing come from? The lift of the wing is due to the dissymmetry of the pressure distribution. But this is out of the scope of the present talk. Let's consider the two pressure distributions for the two regimes. On the left, we have a symmetrical wing. We have not figured the turbulent wake and the drag that comes from. Then we have no pressure drag, only frictional drag. On the right, in supersonic regime, the shockwave at the leading edge creates another pressure figured in red. Then the expansion fan creates an important depression. As a result, we get that we call a wave drag. When the Mach number grows, this wave drag becomes the main component of the total drag. To estimate its importance, let's go back to our hydraulic analogy. It's a way to evoke the fact that when you increase the Mach number, the wave drag and all kinds of drag grow dramatically. When you fly a liner at 500 miles per hour, it moves at 30,000 feet in an atmosphere whose pressure is a half of the pressure at sea level. 
The blackbird flies at 3.5 times faster, but at its altitude of 90,000 feet, the pressure is 10 times smaller. So that there is some sort of compensation, its drag doesn't grow so much. The Russian missile Kinzhal arises a problem. Putin says it flies at Mach 10, but at what altitude? On the video he showed on March 2018, we see the Kinjal missile launched by a MiG-31. We know that the Russian MiG-31 can fly at Mach 3 at 90,000 feet altitude. But we also read that the Kinjal air to ground missile will be also fired from a Shukhoi 57 fighter whose ceiling is 65,000 feet. However, the long range Kinjal missile is an air to ground missile and is not designed to fly in very rarefied air and very high altitude. So, how can it fly during 10 minutes over? 1,200 miles at Mach 10, two times faster than the most advanced air-to-ground missile that exists right now just at the level of a project. As we will see now, this also arises a problem about the thermal flux. If supersonic airplanes or missiles are built in light alloy of aluminium, this light melts at 600 degrees centigrade, but it begins to lose its mechanical properties at 400 degrees. This brings an upper limit to the Mach number, around 2.2, and the temperature of the structure of the airplane Concorde was heated at around 100 degrees centigrade. For higher velocities and Mach numbers, the airplanes are built in titanium, which melts at 1600 degrees centigrade, but begins to lose its mechanical properties at a lower temperature. All the structures of the Blackbird were heated at 400 degrees during all the flight. The fuel was used as a coolant. If the suit of the pilot was kept at suitable temperature, the rest of the cockpit was at 60 degrees centigrade, and during the flight, the windows were heated at 400 degrees, so that the pilot could reheat his food just putting the dish on the window. Let's now describe a case using the kinetic theory description. You can find that in one of my books that you can download free at the following address. Then a case becomes a set of molecules moving randomly with thermal velocity. Why thermal? Just because the absolute temperature is nothing but a measure of the mean kinetic energy of the molecules, while the pressure is the result of the multiple impacts of the molecules on a surface. Through such impacts, the gas may transmit to the wall momentum, force and heat. The propagation of sound becomes a collisional process. That's for the speed of sounds 340 meters per second is so close to the mean random thermal velocity, which is 400 meters per second. The air you breathe is composed by tiny molecules whose velocity is 400 meters per second. Let's figure a case as a crowd composed by blind people. Following some new images from my book The Silence Barrier that you can download free again. An object that moves in a case at subsonic velocity can be compared to a bus that enters into a crowd at a velocity which is lower than the walking speed of blind people. The guy just moves softly to give place to the bus. 
Now, if the bus uh, uh, runs into the crowd at a velocity which is higher than the walking velocity, as the people accumulate, as they tend to run to escape the bus, it's an image for a supersonic flight and shows how the density of the gas is increased behind a shock wave and why the thermal velocity is increased too. It expresses that behind the shock, the kinetic energy of the movement is converted into heat at the stagnation point. So that, according to the equation of the conservation of the energy, the absolute temperature grows as a square of the velocity, that is the square of the Mach number. In fact, at such high Mach number and temperature, several other things interfere, dissociation, ionization, radiation loss, that make that the stagnation temperature and world temperature are somewhat smaller. Anyway, from tables, it seems difficult to fly a mass ice like Kijal at an altitude lower than 60,000 feet and a velocity of Mach 10. Let's go back to the talk of the President Putin. Listen. We've developed a new hypersonic system. Nothing similar exists anywhere in the world. What's behind all that? A new technology? If the Maasai could prevent the birth of shockwave, the answer would be yes. Let us see how it could work. This is a wing in supersonic regime with its system of shock waves. The birth of shock waves comes from the overlap of the Mach lines. So that, as I suggested in 1975, such shock would not appear if we could maintain the parallelism of the Mach lines. Consider a two-dimensional supersonic flow in a constant cross-section channel. There is the corresponding Mach lines system. We know that the local value of the Mach number and the local value of the angle of the Mach lines depends on the local value of the velocity. We have presented the wall MHD accelerator invented by the American Stewart Way. Let's present now another MHD accelerator invented by the British Michael Faraday. The Faraday MHD accelerator is an application of the three fingers law. You see on the right the channel, the coils, and the segmented electrodes. The electromagnetic force G cross B is called the Lorentz force. Imagine a supersonic flow driven through an MHD accelerator. The magnetic field is perpendicular to the plane of the figure. On this drawing, I have figured the corresponding Mach lines. From the middle of the 60s to the end of the 60s, my shock tube provided a 50 microsecond burst of argon at 10,000 degrees Kelvin, pressure 1 bar, velocity 2.7 km per second. The electrical conductivity was 3,000 mo per meter. Due to this exceptionally high electrical conductivity, we could achieve a very strong interaction parameter. The value of the transverse magnetic field created by a condensator bank was 2 Tesla. Dimensions of my Faraday accelerator, square section 5 cm per 5 cm, length 10 cm. Successful acceleration experiments provided a gain of velocity of 5 km per second along the 10 cm long constant cross-section MHD channel. Unfortunately, no one in France realized the interest of such experiments. Anyway, it shows how electromagnetic forces can control the flow. Imagine you replace the motors of the supersonic airplane Concorde by linear Faraday MHD accelerators. Apply a 1 Tesla transverse magnetic field and an electric current limited to 1 ampere per square centimeter. Then you get a thrust of 1 torr per cubic meter. 
applying to air in normal condition, you get an acceleration of 800 g. Consider an electrical motor. It transforms electrical energy from a battery into mechanical energy. Conversely, if I inject mechanical energy into this device, this loss is transformed into electrical energy. Similarly, the MHD system are reversible. Here we have our Faraday accelerator. Let's replace the electrical source by a load and we have a Faraday generator. Inside the channel, the plasma is submitted to an induced electric field, V cross B, which produces an electric current, G. This is nothing but the Ohm's law. Combine it to the magnetic field, this goes with a Lorentz force, G cross B, which slows down the fluid, so that we transform kinetic energy into electricity. To sum up, with a convenient Lorentz force field, we can act on a supersonic flow, modifying the pattern of the Mach line as the following. In our shock tube experiments, with a strong interaction parameter due to the strong electrical conductivity, the slowing down effect was so strong that the Mach lines accumulate that produced a burst of a front shock wave. This was the origin of the idea. I said to myself, if I can produce a shock wave without any physical obstacle, it should be possible to remove the shock waves around a body immersed in a supersonic flow. I published that in France in 1976 and in an international MHD meeting held in Moscow in 1983. I first try to comfort the ID through hydraulic experiments. It is easy to imagine a large variety of external MHD accelerators. With that one, I had already succeeded to cancel a turbulent wake around a cylinder. Consider the hull of the ship. To control the flow, the following force field was required. I thought first about a pyramidal magnet or a coil but it was necessary to have an interaction parameter high enough. With a current density limited to 1 ampere per square centimeter to avoid electrolysis, a 1 tesla field was required. So I shifted for this device. Immediately the waves disappeared, the flatness of the water was ensured along the hull. This is a dihedral that features the leading edge of the wing of a supersonic airplane. Attached to the leading edge of this wing, the two flat shock waves. A shock wave is an abrupt change of the velocity, which is decreased, and a rise of the temperature, which goes with a rise of the speed of sound, so that the case can be evacuated along the sides of the wings with a lower value of the Mach number. When the angle of the dihedral grows, the temperature and the speed of sound nearby the leading edge grow, so that a subsonic region green appears. A so-called bow shock forms. The configuration is similar, considering axially symmetric objects with blunt nose. This shape is chosen in order to spread the heat flux over a larger surface. It was convenient to try to apply through hydraulic experiment the shock cancellation technique. We first considered a two-dimensional gas flow simulated by the liquid flow around the cylinder. The result was immediate and impressive. The Lorentz force created a depression on the front part of the object, so that one could imagine an extension to an axially symmetrical MHD aerodyne of this two-dimensional schema. Inside, a system of three coils fast shifted that produces a synchronized rotating magnetic dipole. If the period of such system is small with respect to the transit time of the fluid, it will work as an axisymmetric force field. It's easier to realize for hydraulic experiments with a rotating magnet and rotating brushes. 
in a case such configuration if one had at his own disposal a light and powerful source of electrical energy could make possible to operate a supersonic flight without a form shockwave. Of course, I tried to extend the experiment in case. First idea was to use a shock tube as a generator of supersonic flow with high density and high electrical conductivity. Then, if the experiment would have been successful, the technique would have been extended to external atmospheric air. Then, the required ionization would have been created by microwaves. During the beginning of the 80s, I supervised a PhD thesis Using a computer, we calculated the pattern of the Mach lines and we calculated all the value of the required parameters in order to drive the experiment. During my career, I always calculated very carefully all my experiments so that they always worked at the first trial, including the experiments about the cancellation of uh, the Velikov instability. So that I think this experiment would have worked immediately. There was a series of uh, publications in uh, peer-reviewed top-level scientific journals. 1989, shockwave annihilation by MHD action in supersonic flows, quasi-one-dimensional study analysis and thermal blockage, two-dimensional steady non-mesotropic analysis, anti-shock criterion, and shock tube simulation for isotropic flows at the European Journal of Mechanics. There were also communication in the international MHD meeting in 1983 uh, in Moscow, uh, one there uh, at my own expense, and then 1983 87 Tsukuba, Japan, and 1980 Beijing, China. As I had no funding to attend this conference and uh, no funding to set up the experiments, in the middle of the 80s I decided to give up and to join the observatory in Marseille and to shift to pure theoretical works in astrophysic and cosmology. I gave you all that stuff in order to show you that uh, shockwave cancellation was not a fancy idea. You realize that MHD is a fantastic world with so many configurations and possibilities. Now let's go back to the talk of uh, President Putin in Moscow, uh, 2018 March. If you consider the Kinjal Mach 10 missile, shockwave and uh, drag cancellation is possible if we have enough electrical energy aboard. The Kinjal missile, like the MHD torpedo, uses the concept of MHD bypass. Imagine a guy has an idea. He says, we are going to build a jet motor. How does it work? Oh, it's simple. The air enters there, and then we add some fuel, it burns, it provides energy, and the thermal velocity is converted in a nozzle into an exhaust velocity. This last becomes higher than the inlet velocity, so we get a thrust. But it doesn't work, because the fuel cannot burn fast enough in the air at such density. The guy says, okay, okay, we are going to increase the density with a compressor. It requires some energy. How to operate this compressor? Wait, 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 wait. Uh, I have an idea. We are going to make a mechanical bypass. We will use a part of the energy provided by the combustion of the fuel to move a turbine that will transmit this energy through a common axis. How could you imagine something simpler? How we call it a turbofan. Well, for the MHD torpedo and the hypersonic missile, 
we are going to do the same. In the nozzle, we have an MHD generator, Faraday type or wall generator. Remember, the MHD converter are basically reversible. Massines and torpedo are not designed for a long duration operation so that we can add in the propellant cesium and uh, admit a very high temperature in the nozzle in order to get enough electrical connectivity. Many MHD systems can be considered to cancel shock waves and control the drag, but we are not going to describe such systems. We will shift to the avant-garde system because it implies additional aspects of plasma physics. Plasma physics, which goes with the avant-garde system, is somewhat different because this machine flies at very high altitude where the air becomes very rarefied. When an electric current takes place in a plasma, it corresponds to the movement of free electrons submitted to the action of the electric field, they move between two collisions along their mean free path. Due to the action of the magnetic field, their path is not a straight line, but bent. If the mean free path is short enough, this trajectory is almost a straight line. The electric current density vector j is almost oriented in the same direction as the electric field E equal g cross b. The critical parameter is the so-called old parameter beta, which is the ratio of the zero frequency divided by the collision frequency. If it is small, it means that between two collisions the electron has no time to turn. For the same value of the magnetic field, if the density of the gas is lower, it increases the mean free path. So the curvature of the electron path goes with the drift movement. As a result, the current density vector g differs significantly from the electric field direction. Theta is called the all angle. At the altitude where the hypersonic glider flies, with the required values of the magnetic field, the value of the whole parameter can reach 20, so that theta would be close to 90 degrees. The value of the electrical conductivity sigma is the most important parameter for a plasma. It depends on the density of free electrons in that plasma. Those free electrons comes from atoms and molecules and are produced by collisional process. To pull an electron orbiting along an orbit around the nucleus of an atom requires a certain amount of energy, the ionization energy. Now I think the best is to give you some element of kinetic theory of gas and plasmas. A gas is a set of atoms or molecules with a random thermal velocity. Here the gas is made of neutral particles. Further, we will consider a mixture of neutral and ionized elements and group them as heavy species. Have a look to the curve. Along the x-axis, capital E is the kinetic energy of a component of the gas. The mean value of this kinetic energy is nothing but the absolute temperature of the gas. On the other axis, we have the probability density corresponding to each value of this energy. According to the theorem of the total probability, the area under the curve is equal to unity. In this population of neutral atoms, some that belong to the tail of that Maxwell-Boltzmann velocity distribution have a kinetic energy that exceeds the ionization energy. Then, through a collision with another neutral atom, it can pull out an electron that becomes a free electron. Without that electron, the atom becomes an ion. This is thermal ionization. Conversely, if a slow electron encounters an ion, 
it can combine to it and give a neutral atom. The excess of energy is released by the emission of a photon. This is the desionization process. A detailed balancing settles with a certain ionization level, which grows exponentially with the temperature of the gas. Three populations live together and exchange energy through collisions. First, we find a majority of neutral atoms or molecules where their random thermal velocity and absolute temperature as a measure of the corresponding mean kinetic energy. Then we find a certain percentage of ions and the corresponding number of electrons. We get a plasma electrically neutral. In the preceding images, we have considered a thermal ionization process, where the free electrons come from the collisions between neutrons. But the energy can be brought by an electric field. In such conditions, the free electrons come from the collisions between electrons on atoms or molecules. This is called a non-thermal ionization regime. In all cases, the species exchange energy through collisional process. The energy exchange is stronger if the masses of the objects are similar. If the plasma is not rarefied, the collision produces a state of thermodynamical equilibrium where all the mean kinetic energy are identical. In other terms, due to the definition of the absolute temperature, the three temperature of the three species, neutral, ions, electrons, are equal. The electron temperature T high is equal to the gas temperature T J. The electric field brings the energy which is transmitted from the electron gas to the gas of molecules and atoms by collisions. This energy is dissipated through collision of the EV species with the environment, eventually by shocks on the wall or by radiation emission. If the plasma is rarefied, the collision between ions and neutrons are still efficient, so that the two temperatures of such species remain equal. But the electron gas has some difficulty to transfer its energy to the EV species, so that we get an unequilibrium regime where the electron temperature exceeds the temperature of the gas. Then, if my side uses MHD at a high altitude, the electron temperature is much higher than the gas temperature and the old parameter is very large. This arises a severe problem, the problem of the electrothermal instability. It grows very fast. Its characteristic growth time is of the same order of magnitude that the one of the growth of ionization. It was discovered and even predicted in 1964 by the Russian Velikov. How can we show the electrothermal instability? Consider a glass bulb filled by air at low density. On left and right, two electrodes. If we put this electrode under voltage, an homogeneous discharge forms. Now, if you submit that bulb to a moderate magnetic field perpendicular to the plane of the feature, you get that, which corresponds to the precedent feature picked from my PhD thesis 1972. This kind of a mess crashed down the effort of researchers in a dozen of countries in the 60s who hoped to operate non-equilibrium MHD electrical generator. On the picture, you can see a model of one of those facilities built over all the world. This one is a Russian U-25 facility working with hot helium seeded by cesium. In red, you may see the two coils. On the right, you have big tanks which contain helium. On the left, 
you have a cesium recovery unit. On this rare picture, the inside of this MHD channel. On left and right, the electrodes. Civilian MHD was abandoned at the beginning of the 70s. In Russia, United States and China, MHD continued in classified projects. Other countries, including Europe and France, are completely out of the race. The missile avant-garde is a result of 50 years of work. The electrothermal instability was a key problem. It was solved by a method based on magnetic confinement, similar to the method I introduced in 1983 that I comforted by successful experiments in low-pressure gas. The first project was Ajax, an hypersonic airplane propelled by a set of turbofans and scrapjet. With MHD-driven inlets and an MHD bypass system. Avant-garde is nothing but the unmotorized and miniaturized version of Ajax. Schematically, it has a system of self-excited wall generator that converts the kinetic energy of the gas into electricity in a high hole parameter regime. The whole field creates a cushion of plasma that protects the leading edge. Avant-garde is a wave glider. It is too fast and too agile to be intercepted by ground-based systems. Surrounded by plasma, it is protected against the space-based system. As a general conclusion, I would say that the system evoked by President Vladimir Putin in his talk on March 1st, 2018, are highly plausible.